All right, folks. We're going to get into our last, but certainly not least, speaker of this track. Everyone meet Andrew, the theater-loving software developer with a diverse background. From psychology and theater to coding boot camps, he's now a React developer at Bitovi. For over two years, Andrew has led teams and consulted with top brands worldwide. Originally from Massachusetts, he now resides in Buffalo, New York, and enjoys cooking, reading, board games, skiing, and passionately cheering for the Boston Bruins. Today, Andrew will guide us through onboarding new developers, drawing from his boot, boot camp grad and consultant experience. He'll share strategies to help developers navigate unfamiliar React code bases and offer advice for teams and managers to make the onboarding process smoother, regardless of prior experience. Don't miss this insightful presentation by Andrew. All right, Thunderplanes, how are we doing? All right. It's like 10 years, super, super excited to be here for the, uh, the 10th anniversary. Uh, quick show of hands, uh, is this anyone's, anyone else's first time here at Thunderplanes? Great, ton of people. Uh, keep your hand up if this is your first in-person tech conference. Cool, so not just me, awesome, I love it, um, I love it. So uh, huge shout out to, uh, to everyone putting this together, um, but uh, really, uh, really great to be here. And um, hey, since I'm bad in cleanup, I can do this. Let's do another round of applause for all the other speakers today. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> they saved the best for last though. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, everyone's about to learn a, learn a lesson. You know that children's book, uh, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie? Yeah, I have my own version. It's called If You Give a Theater Kid a Microphone. <laughs> well, all right, let's get into it. Uh, thank you all for, for coming, and uh, welcome to my talk here, Out of the Frying Pan, Into the Fire, A New Dev's Guide to Navigating Unfamiliar Code Bases. Uh, so like musketeers, little pigs, or stooges, this talk will come to you in three parts. Uh, I'll, go, I'll start with a quick introduction, give you some background and context on me, uh, so you know where I'm coming from and why this is something that I think I know a thing or two about. And then we'll go through a number of tactical strategies that new developers, or really any developers, uh, can use to help themselves get up to speed faster uh, whenever you find yourself in an unfamiliar code base for the first time, whether you're joining a new company, joining a new team, uh, or you make a wrong turn and you end up a consultant like me and you keep bouncing from client to client. I'm just kidding, consulting rocks. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So my promise to you is this, uh, whether you're an aspiring dev, a new dev, old hat dev, new manager, experienced manager, whatever, uh, you'll walk out of this room at the end of this talk with at least one concrete tactical strategy that you will want to try the next time that you are in an unfamiliar code base or helping someone on board to your team. I promise you that, and I also promise you gifts. Big gift guy. So, hey, that's me. Uh, my name is Andrew Colburn, and I am a guy who wears uh, way too many hats at Bitovi, which is a JavaScript consulting firm, but primarily I am a developer consultant. So Bitovi gets hired for a project, whether that is building a greenfield application, solving a specific tricky problem, uh, or just augmenting an existing development team. You name it, we'll do it. Uh, and I'm one of the folks that goes in and actually executes whatever those projects are. So typically for me, this is some sort of React development, uh, augmenting an existing development team. Uh, and I've been at Batovi since April of 2021, so been there a bit over two and a half years. Uh, but I actually want to back up a little bit before that. So uh, back in 2019, I was actually working as a recruiter, uh, mostly recruiting tech roles. And the firm I worked at, we stayed with candidates all the way through their first six months uh, at their new roles once we placed them. So we saw the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to onboarding. And a lot of my thoughts in here actually come from some of those experiences. Uh, and then we all know what happened in 2020, right? Uh, unfortunately, a bit after COVID hit, I lost my job as a recruiter. One thing led to another, and I ended up enrolling in a coding boot camp. I uh, did that through the end of 2020 and beginning of 2021 when I graduated and landed my first tech role as a developer consultant at Batovi. And now you want to talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. Try being fresh out of boot camp, getting hired at a consulting company, and immediately being staffed on a project working with one of the largest and most recognizable fast food brands in the world. 
Whew. I won't say who, but it was a really fun project. It was downright finger looking good. Um, <laughs> Uh, since then, I've worked on a whole bunch of projects uh, from fast food to uh, medical e-commerce. Uh, I've worked with tiny startups, Fortune 500 behemoths, uh, really run the gamut. Uh, and I've also been lucky enough to be put into some leadership positions at Batovi. I've been a team lead on client projects. I've been a lead in our internal React department uh, as well, running our people and culture initiatives and helping make sure people are happy and uh, successful in our department. So. All this is to say that I think I bring a unique perspective uh, to this topic because uh, I'm still kind of a new dev myself. I've only been doing this for two and a half years uh, professionally. Um, but I've also experienced onboarding onto like at least eight different projects uh, in that time. Um, and I've also been in a position to try and help others uh, onboard faster onto their projects. So uh, enough about me. Let's get to what you came here for. New Dev's Guide. So these tips uh, are in no particular order. Uh, these are things that I have used consciously or unconsciously uh, to help smooth my onboarding onto projects. Uh, also, I want to shout out the entire React department uh, at Batovi because uh, I run our team meetings, so I hijacked one um, and made them all give me their tips, um, and they gave me a bunch of stuff that I didn't think of. Um, so this isn't just from me. This is the collective wisdom of a group of really awesome developers and consultants who have, between them, onboarded to projects hundreds and hundreds of times. So uh, it's not just, not just come from me. Um, so, um, this is kind of the overarching question, you know, how do you onboard yourself? My hope for all of you is that every team, every organization you ever join for the rest of your career has stellar onboarding processes, they got documentation, they got everything you need, everything is smooth sailing from day one. But then you wouldn't need to talk like this, would you? <laughs> so, uh, I think the main thing is to be ready to ask questions. If you are a super shy, uh, introverted person uh, who was here for the networking talk, seems like it was most of us, uh, right? Same, uh, me too, I, I, I hear you. Um, but if there's ever a time to set that aside, I think it's when you're first starting in a new team, a new project, because especially if they don't have really good onboarding processes, you're gonna have to ask some questions, right? And if you're not putting yourself out there to do that, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, so know what you don't know and go find out how to uh, figure that out. So some questions that you might uh, wanna ask, either ask yourself or ask others to figure out. Um, you know, what is our product really? Like how do we make money? We all love all the tech stuff, uh, but it only matters if, we're, if the company is making money, right? If the uh, product is successful. So how do we do that? Uh, what processes are really important in this organization? How do we get things done? Who are the key people to know in the organization? Uh, what systems do I need access to? How do we do uh, authentication for those things? Um, am I going to be roadblocked because you know, no one told them that a new guy was starting and I don't have access to the code base, right? Um, and uh, you know, what's our CI CD pipeline look like? Do we have one? Um, can be a good thing to look at uh, as well. Um, also, if this isn't your very first rodeo uh, getting onto a new project, then I like to think about what has made onboarding experiences in the past either good or bad, right? Like what made them good, what made them bad, and what can I go out and get for myself you know, this next time around uh, that would have been helpful in the past. So. All right, time for, some, time for some tips. So tip number one, get it running, right? If you don't know where to start, uh, that's as good a place as any. Try to launch your application locally and make sure that you can do that because after all, if you can't run the app locally for some reason, you're gonna struggle to make uh, any real progress at all pretty quickly. So you know, install your packages, boot up the app on your machine, and if it works, great. You got one hurdle down, but uh, if it doesn't, also great, you know exactly where to start. Uh, something funky's going on and you're not gonna get very far until you solve that. Um, also, see this tip, and honestly, most of the tips in here assume that at a bare minimum you have access to the code base in question, um, which unfortunately you might be surprised how many times I have joined projects only to wait a week or two or three <laughs> to get access to everything that I needed. So uh, I'll stop here and say my biggest tip if you're in that boat. Uh, is if you don't have the access you need is, is really be the squeaky wheel, right? I know when you're on a new team or new company, new project, uh, you don't, uh, you know, you don't want to rock the boat, uh, but if you're going to rock the boat, that's something to, to, to rock it for. Um, if you don't have independent access to things, you're not going not gonna to get very far, right? You're, not, you're going to run out of things to do pretty fast. So that's something you can be a little annoying about uh, if necessary. Um, and if that goes really slowly, I have more than once uh, asked a developer on the team to just put the whole repo in a zip folder and send it to me so that I can at a bare minimum read it, right? Even if I can't um, do anything more than that. So hopefully you have access to the things you need though. 
Uh, tip number two, testing, testing, testing. If your app has tests, dear God, I hope your app has tests. Um, <laughs> run them, right? See if they will run, see if they will pass. Uh, if they don't run, hey, that's something you wanna figure out ASAP, right? Um, if they run, but some things are failing, that is worth in get investigating before you get too far into uh, doing something yourself because is there something broken? Uh, is there something in your environment that you need to, uh, to change? Or is there just a flaky test that no one's gotten around to fixing yet? Uh, what you don't want is to start getting into the swing of things, start getting into, uh, you know, working on your first tickets and, um, you know, run the tests as part of your, your work and have it fail and then not know whether you caused something to go wrong or if it was failing the whole time and you just didn't know that. So make sure you know that baseline before you get started. Um, and hey, if there's a flaky test uh, that's always failing and no one's gotten around to fixing it, um, that is an awesome, quick, easy win for you as the new person on the team. You'll be a hero. Everyone's gonna be like, wow, that's been annoying me for months. I'm so glad someone fixed that. Um, so, uh, in, in fact, if you actually, if you have a choice of where to start working or you just have to figure it out for yourself, I think that writing unit tests can be a great place to start because you know, on 99% of projects, everyone knows that they should have more testing, right? But no one wants to write the tests. So go get your hands dirty, uh, improve the team's test coverage, you will be a hero. Um, even if you don't have that choice, uh, if, or if you maybe don't feel comfortable uh, doing that on day one, uh, you can go and read them, right? Because uh, most tests, especially if they're written well, uh, will just read like plain English and are easy to uh, figure out what's going on. So. Uh, great thing to look at and learn what the code does, or at least what the code is supposed to do. Uh, so if you run into something like this, dear God, um, you, uh, you can just, uh, you can ignore that and go look at the test and figure out what's going on. And you, you go read the test and go, oh, okay, this is just like a really overdone sum function with some type checks to make sure we're not adding two plus fish. Great. Um, understand that much more than that absolute garbage on the last, <laughs> last slide. Um, and by the way, if you want to brush up on your unit testing, uh, shameless plug, uh, go to batovi.com slash blog and put unit tests in the search and you will find a bunch of great articles as well as training content uh, from our Batovi Academy uh, on writing tests. Um, and so for those of you keeping score, uh, that brings our shameless plug count to one. What was that again? Sorry? What was that again? The website? Yeah bitovi.com slash blog, and you'll be able to find a whole lot of great stuff there. Um, so tip number three, uh, learn what's in the toolbox. What is your project using? Uh, this is something that you can really start diving into on day one, even if nothing is working, no one has time to help you, you can't run the app, everything's on fire. As long as you can get someone to send you a screenshot of the package JSON file, you, can, you have a place to start, right? You can look at the dependencies section, and see if you recognize anything or see if there's anything that you don't recognize. You can start there. Go and read the documentation for those projects or for those packages so that you know at a bare minimum generally what it does, right? So much of uh, web development is just knowing how these things work and how to stitch them together, uh, right? So, uh, and, and hey, maybe on the last, uh, in the last section, um, maybe you're new and thinking, okay, great, uh, testing, that's awesome. How do I know what my team is using for testing? How do I run the tests? Start here, look at the dev dependencies. You'll find, among other things, you'll find your uh, packages related to testing uh, there. And you'll also find your, uh, don't have it on the slide, but you'll find your scripts there too, right? So if you're not sure how to run the test or how to start your app, that's where you will uh, find that. So moral of the story is know what is at your disposal and what the team already uses uh, so you don't end up building something from scratch that was unnecessary or installing a package that is doing something redundant and is already in the application. Tip number four, grab your reading glasses. Because uh, whether or not you can start up the app or test the app or do anything else, as long as you uh, have access to the code base or can get someone to send some stuff to you, uh, you can read it, right? Go through the code, read it, make notes of what you think things do if you, if you can't run it. You know, note pieces that you don't understand that you want to investigate further. Um, you just try and get a feel for, uh, for the code base just by, by reading through it. Um, if, you can, uh, if you can start uh, your application, it's also great to you know, run the app and compare the code to the live application running on your machine and just look for things that don't match up to your expectations. If you think X is gonna happen and Y happens, that's probably a good thing to investigate and figure out what is going on. Um, okay, but this code base has hundreds of files. Where do I even start with that? Great question. Uh, honest answer, 
I don't think it matters. <laughs> a few approaches, right? You can, uh, one approach would be to go to the entry point of the application, probably some top level index file, right? Uh, and dig in from there and just keep diving deeper until you get to something that is meaty enough uh, for you to explore um, and, and start there. So let's say we had a, a basic uh, Next.js app here uh, as for a tic-tac-toe game. Um, so first I'm going to go to that, uh, that index page um, and see what's going on. So I, I'll look at that and see, all right, it's importing uh, something called app and uh, rendering that. So not, not a whole lot um, to, to learn here. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's look at, uh, let's look at app um, and we, will, uh, we see we get uh, board. Okay, that's, uh, app is rendering board and applying some styles. That, that's still not, um, not a ton. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's go look at that. All right, now we see board. And now we have some stuff to get into. We're getting somewhere. Things are happening. Um, and now we can go in a few different directions. I might want to look at that uh, use tic-tac-toe hook and see what's going on there. Or maybe I want to go look at that square component. Um, or maybe I just want to mess around with some of the props that are being passed in here and just see what happens. You know, what, what happens if I change, you know, that value prop, uh, that square value uh, to just a hard-coded string? What's going what's gonna to happen? Uh, what if I swap out that function for something that just console logs for me so I can see how it's being triggered in the, uh, in the UI. Um, anyway, you just dig in until you get to something meaty enough to, uh, to explore. Um, another approach might be just figure out what the key part of the app is and start there. You know, if it's an e-commerce site, uh, maybe it's your product pages or your checkout page. You know, what is this application for? what is absolutely mission critical to that application, um, go, go figure that out because nothing else, uh, nothing else really matters besides that, right? Um, and another approach, my personal favorite, um, is just like spin a wheel, like throw darts, like just pick something, just pick a file, um, read it and, and try to start making sense of uh, what uh, things are doing. Um, another approach uh, would be to start with uh, shared code. Um, by this I mean, you know, any like utilities or, or, or types or whatever that are used in various places across uh, the code base. So let's say that our, our tic-tac-toe app uh, looked like this and, and had this uh, shared folder um, at our, uh, within our, our source directory here. Now, I'm going to give that a read, right? And because the last thing I want to do is spend an afternoon building something from scratch only to push my code and have the senior dev on the team go, hey, great job, but... Uh, we already have something that does this and you just wasted a whole day rebuilding it. So try not to do that, <laughs> right? Uh, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, at a minimum, uh, learn where the shared stuff is so that you can check before you embark on building some, uh, some great thing that is already in there. Um, moral of the story for all this is just keep your feet moving. Uh, if you're stuck, if you feel like you're not getting anything out of what you're looking at, uh, just change approaches. Go look at something else. Just keep, uh, keep moving um, until you're feeling comfortable. But don't just read the code, right? Recently closed uh, merge requests or pull requests are a absolute goldmine for a new developer on the team. Personally, this is something I always forget about. Um, and then when someone tells me to do it, I'm like, Right, that is super helpful. Um, because if a merge request has been closed and merged in, um, that means it's something the team accepted, right? Um, so that can tell you a bunch about what the team accepts as done. Um, it'll teach you about the team's most recent struggles, most recent priorities. Um, if there's a healthy discussion, it will tell you a lot about the team dynamics as well. All very, very helpful things to know as a new member of the team. So uh, this is just a snippet from a, a PR in one of Batovi's uh, fantastic open source projects, uh, React to Web Component. Um, hold on, hold on one second. Um, Right, okay, shameless plug, number two. Um, uh, but looking at this, I'm learning, okay, maybe this team, you know, they leave notes in the, in the comments of, of PRs uh, explaining what's going on, you know, while it's a work in progress, uh, or even when things are done, and hey, it looks like they're using that, that feature on GitHub where they can, you know, ping someone to officially request a review from them. Um, you know, I, I'm learning some, some things about how the team might work here. Uh, so read those merged uh, pull requests. It can be super, super helpful. Tip number five, what's this button do? Uh, so you've got the app running, you're looking at a specific page, you're viewing the corresponding uh, code. Um, now, we're gonna get interactive again. How many of you were people as, as kids where you'd like take things apart um, and put them back together to like, you know, just mess around with them? And, and you, you learned a lot about how things worked doing that, right? Um, so do the same thing. Break the code um, and put it back together again. 
Um, you know, pick a random line, comment it out, see what happens. Or find something that you're not sure what it does, comment it out, and see what breaks uh, in the application. Um, is there a badly named variable you can't tell what it's for? Great, comment it out, see what happens, right? You'll get some hints. Uh, break things and fix them again uh, until you understand how the code uh, is working. Uh, so another another question here is anyone had like a uh, any sort of medical procedure where they need to use like dye or contrast or something to like see what's going on? Um, and do you know that we have a web dev equivalent? Does anyone know what it is? No. It's border one pixel solid red. Uh, right. Uh, it, it, it's uh, you know, great for seeing where the boundaries are of a, of a component or or just uh, locating something in the UI or. Confirming that what you think you're working on actually is the thing that you're uh, that you're working on, um, and uh, also don't be afraid to uh, riddle your code with console logs. Uh, if you saw anything I'm actively working on, you'd probably be appalled. Uh, make sure you delete them before you push the code, uh, but uh, throw them everywhere. You know, if you aren't sure what a function's doing, um, put a bunch of console logs in there at different points, saying what you think happens, and then run it and see if it matches up. Um, Right. Uh, see if it matches up with what you actually experience in the app. Um, and again, you can comment things out with reckless abandon. That uh, that very important function. Not anymore. It's not. <laughs> we'll see. We'll comment it out. We'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Um, break stuff. Break stuff. It's fun. Um, and then fix it. Uh, tip number six: uh, buddy system. So uh, hopefully your team uh, sets you up with this from the start. Um, but if they don't, then uh, go go find it yourself. Um, ask a developer on your team if you can pair with them on something that they are working on. Uh, you'll get a feel for the code base. You'll see how a more experienced uh, member of the team works through an issue that is probably a little bit more um, uh, tricky than anything you'll be working on in your first uh, first week or two. Um, and as a bonus, you might uh, start to pick up on some you know bits of the team's culture. You know, like okay, we have I know what we say our definition of done is, but like what is it really, right? Um, what do we let slide? What's absolutely essential? What patterns do we use? All things you can pick up really quickly by working with someone else um, on the team. And of course you can ask them to pair with you on something that you're working on, one of your first issues. Um, but if you ask to work with them on something that they're working on, then they can't hit you with the sorry I'm too busy. Um, you can just help them work on, on their stuff. So um, maybe there's some of you out there uh, who, are, who, who are newer who are going, what the hell does he mean pair with them? Um, I'm talking about pair programming, right, where two developers work together on the same code at the same time. Um, don't have time to get into all the nitty gritty of that. Um, that is another talk or 12. Uh, but generally, you know, one person is the driver. They're the one actually typing the code. And the other person is the navigator who's responsible for catching errors and solving problems and you know, saying, hey, try this, try that. Um, now, if you're anything like me, when you are a newer developer, you'll think that that navigator role is the place for you to be. And you are wrong. That is a recipe for watching a senior developer silently type away while you just watch and you don't know what's going on. Um, and spending hours silently watching someone else code, probably not going to do you that much good, right? Um, and uh, so as intimidating as it might be, if you're in, in that kind of a situation, uh, I think it's best that you drive, you do the typing. Uh, pair programming is a skill in and of itself. Uh, and there are endless resources and blogs out there uh, full of tips and tricks for how to effectively uh, pair as both a, a junior or senior developer. Uh, but as a new developer, I think it boils down to two things. Uh, number one is A, B, D, always be driving. Uh, and number two is ask questions. You now, if you don't understand something that your pair is asking you to do or they're saying, uh, don't try to BS your way through it and pretend that you know what they're saying, ask them questions. Um, again, hopefully your team will set you up with a buddy in some sort of formal way from the start, someone you can ask questions of and who can kind of show you around. Uh, but if not, uh, and you have to go get it for yourself, I think it's even more important in those cases that you are um, going about it uh, you know, in the right way and being respectful of folks' time, right? So make sure that you're not adding to their workload. If you've got to schedule a meeting on the calendar, uh, don't ask them to do that. You do that. Um, and, you know, show up on time. You know, they, these little obvious things um, that uh, really add up. You know, be mindful of the clock um, and call out when you've reached the end of whatever meeting you've set up. Because you know, maybe you'll keep going, uh, maybe maybe not. But I think everyone appreciates it uh, when you get to the end of a scheduled meeting and someone goes, "Hey, uh, we're at time. Uh, you know, we can keep going." But um, I want to respect everyone's calendars. Everyone appreciates that. So um, good to uh, good to do. 
Tip number seven, bug hunting. I think this is my favorite GIF in the, in the slideshow. That's great. <laughs> um, uh, you might not have a choice, again, but if you do have a choice on what to start uh, working on, uh, I think it's a great idea to start with some bug fix tickets as opposed to building uh, brand new features. Because I think if you try to jump right into building new features, it's going to be more difficult, right? You have to learn the patterns that the team uses. You have to learn how the code base works. You're learning all of this on the fly while building something totally new from scratch. So good luck not creating more bugs or doing something in a way that the team doesn't like and you'll have to rewrite it. But if you start with bug fixes, all you have to do is not stray from the patterns that are already in place. Um, and then also in investigating where things are going wrong, uh, you will learn how things should be working. Uh, and then when you jump into building your own fresh features, you will have a better understanding of how to go about it. Tip number eight, uh, help the next person. So um, hopefully, you won't be the last person to onboard to your team, right? That would be, um, that would be a, a bad sign. Um, now, I know this can, be, uh, this can be a big ask because after all, you're new on a team, you're trying to get up to speed, you're trying to make an impact as a dev as fast as possible and you might not feel like you have the time to slow down, stop, and take notes about your onboarding process uh, onto the team. Uh, but I think that is essential. Um, write down all the problems you run into getting, you know, getting up and running and, and what the solutions were. And I'm talking like in minute detail. Like I talked to Dan and then he had to talk to Ryan and he had to message Christina who had to talk to Christopher who finally got me access to that thing and then I could start working. That's good information to have down the line when uh, your boss goes, hey, um, you know, I wanted to, to talk with you about your onboarding and see how we can improve it. You know, you might not remember, uh, you'll remember you had that issue, but maybe not how you solved it. So take the time to, to write down those, uh, uh, those, those things for, uh, for the future. Um, you know, make notes of what documentation is missing or, or what documentation is out of date. Or even better yet, just go and fix it yourself. Um, again, you will be a hero because everyone will know that that is out of date, but no one will have had time to do it, and you can. Um, you know, give feedback to the leaders of your team on what's working well and what needs to be improved um, in terms of onboarding and getting folks up to speed on the project. Because right now, nobody knows that better than you if you're starting on a new project. That there's, you are the number one expert on the onboarding process because you're going through it. You know, for example, if there's like some weird author access issue that takes you 15 hours of work to resolve, uh, better that you spend another hour or two updating some docs or just generally helping make sure that the next person doesn't have to go through that uh, instead of them having to spend 15 hours getting stuck as well. And then they complain to, uh, to you about it at happy hour and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I had that same thing happen. That's, uh, that's brutal. And they're like, well, why didn't you, you fix it? You've been here, <laughs> right? So uh, leave the onboarding process better, uh, better than you found it. And you will, uh, you'll, you'll make a lot of friends. And tip number nine, uh, if you do it, uh, document it. Uh, I, I mean this really two ways. First, you know, related to the last tip, again, documenting your trials and tribulations, uh, getting onto a new project can be immensely helpful down the line for um, helping someone else uh, directly while they're onboarding or just being able to improve, help the team improve the process. Uh, but even more importantly, um, who, who wants to get promoted at some point? Who, who wants to make more money later on in their career than they're making now? The rest of you just want to stay junior devs forever. That's that's cool. That's cool. Um, I, I document all your wins, right? From from day one. If you figure out something, document it. If you solve, help someone solve a tricky bug, write that down. Um, make it a habit to always document your wins, big and small, from the very first day that you were working on a new team and a new project. I have an alert in my to-do manager that pops up every day at 5:30 that tells me, "Hey, write down your wins for the day, big and small." Because when it comes time for your annual review or however your, your team does it, uh, you will have lots to talk about and lots to justify that big fat raise that you uh, want instead of going, oh, man, I've done so much in the past year, but I forget all of the specifics now that I have to talk about it. If you've got a big long document, you are good to go. Um, so that's all the specific tips, um, but I want to wrap up with some uh, mental models or just kind of questions to ask yourself. Uh, these are things that I um, really explicitly ask myself when I start on a new project. So, uh, number one, how do I blend in? 
Um, as uh, consultants, we strive to really integrate into the teams that we work with. So my goal is that if a random person dropped in on a meeting, they would have no idea who works for the client, who is there as a consultant. Um, I I'm trying to blend in and just be another member of the team, not the new guy, not the outside consultant, just, just another developer on the team. But also, how do I stand out? <laughs> in a good way, right? Uh, what has the team been avoiding uh, because no one wants to get their, uh, their hands dirty? You know, I'm gonna go and, go and try and do that. Um, you know, how can I make my MRs like a little bit better uh, than average without going super, super overboard? Um, you know, I think about when I worked as a full-time recruiter and we would visit our clients' offices, we would always explicitly try and dress one level above whatever their office dress code was. So if there were jeans and a t-shirt office, I was wearing a button down and khakis. If they were wearing button down and khakis, I'm throwing on a blazer. If they're going full business casual, I'm wearing a suit. If they're wearing suits, I'm putting on my tux. I'm kidding, no, but I'm wearing a nice suit, right? Uh, and I think about joining a team in the same way. You know, what's the next level that I can take things to? Just like, just taking up just one, just one notch. You know, it, this might just be adding a bit more detail uh, to, to my pull requests or formatting them a bit nicer or just adding a few more comments to the code or maybe making a little bit more of a robust test than people usually would. I'm not going overboard. I'm not going to make people go, wow, this guy's working way too much on this little thing. Um, but just making things just a little bit better uh, than what seems to be the average on the team. Uh, number three, what does my first uh, MR or, or PR need to look like? Uh, this is a pretty big milestone uh, when you are joining a new project and onboarding to a team. So uh, you want it to be good, right? Uh, so try to answer this question before you get there because the last thing you want is to put that, uh, put that MR up and have the team go, oh, you got a lot of work left to do, right? You're missing a bunch of stuff. Uh, or on the other side, you really didn't need to do all of this. You wasted a few days of work. Uh, we got to be a little bit more efficient, right? Uh, figure out that sweet spot best you can uh, and try to hit it. Uh, and the last one here, uh, what do I see with fresh eyes that the rest of the team does not? I really, really think that one of your biggest assets when you are joining a new team, coming onto a new project, is the fact that you are new. Because you only come in with fresh eyes once, right? So if you see something weird, Bring it up, because maybe there's a reason for it, and then, hey, you will learn something about the code base that's really important for you to know. But maybe there isn't a reason for it, and you just found the weird thing that no one noticed, and you can fix that, right? You can see things as the new person that the rest of your team is totally blind to. You only have this, this ability for a little while, so, uh, so use it. Uh, don't be shy. If you see weird stuff, um, call it out. And uh, that's it. Thank you all uh, so much for, uh, for coming. Again, um, I am Andrew Colburn from Batovi. Uh, and if you want to keep in touch, you can hit me up uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, shoot me a message saying you were here and uh, how awesome my talk was. I am a former actor, so I'm very susceptible to flattery. Um, and if you want to chat with me uh, and a whole community of super awesome developers, uh, come and join the uh, Batovi community Discord. You can scan that QR code right there, and it will, uh, it will take you there. We've been putting a ton of work into it lately. Uh, a lot of great conversations happening there every single day. I uh, would love to see some of you guys in there. Uh, and for, for those of you uh, keeping score, that's, um, that's shameless plug number three. <laughs> Um, so uh, enough jokes. Uh, who's got uh, anyone got got questions? Nope, crushed it. <laughs> oh, we got oh, over here. Yeah. When you document your what? Yeah. So, you said, what, what, when you're doc, writing new documentation, how would you how would you go about that, or what would you use? Um, yeah, I, I think it kind of um, it kind of depends. Um, I, I'm a, a, a Obsidian evangelist, so I, I put everything into Obsidian, so it's all it's all in in Markdown. Um, you know, I think if it's something like more formal. Um, like you know, formal documentation about like how our code base uh, works. You know, hopefully there's something like that already that is uh, you can kind of follow that um, you know format that your team is that your team is using if they're if you're kind of filling in a missing piece. Um, you know, if it's um, something like uh, if you're trying to just document your like the onboarding process and what was uh, you know what went well, what went uh, went poorly. Um, I think that can 
you know, take whatever form uh, you are really comfortable with. Um, I personally am a really strong writer, um, and I can, you know, I can whip out a big, you know, uh, a really, uh, you know, concise markdown uh, sheet that will, you know, can be handed off to anyone and help their onboarding. You know, some people might not want to do that. Might they just, you might just want to just have a have a list of observations you've made that will still be um, valuable to to bring up, right? I think that's uh, more about. You, know, you will probably be asked at some point down the line, hey, you know, can we talk about like your onboarding onto this process? We want to make sure it's better in the future. Um, but you won't be asked that when you remember it because everyone's like, oh, we got to leave them alone, let them uh, get their feet underneath them, right? Um, and so you know, th there have been many times where I have forgotten to do that. Um, and then they go, hey, how can we make this better? And I'm like, there were definitely problems, but I don't remember exactly what they are because I didn't take notes. So um, I, I think it's really just, uh, uh, on that end, it's, it's about uh, writing things down so you don't forget. You, you will forget things. Your notebook will not. Oh, fantastic question. So, yeah. What, what yeah. Um, I had one where I was, it was a like, very short project from the start. Like, we knew we only had like, we had like two weeks. Of, uh, of of dev time over like a three week period, like we took a week off for Christmas or something, um, and uh, I, I so we, we knew it was going to be really fast. Uh, it was a really small. It was like it was a startup. It was a really small team. I think it was like two developers and a, and a you know product manager or something. Uh, and I showed up on day one, and the uh, product owner um, had like a PowerPoint um, ready to go, and had clearly really thought through everything very specifically that they wanted me to accomplish while I was working with them. Um, they made sure that I was going to have access to their code on, on day one. I was like, hey, do I have access to things? He was like, you already do. You have the invites in your GitHub, right? Um, sorry, I didn't repeat the, I don't know if I repeated the question. The, the question uh, was any onboarding experiences that uh, were particularly good. Um, so yeah, he, he had this PowerPoint that laid out everything um, about that, that I needed to know about the team, about the project, um, and about you know what they wanted me to do over the, that quick you know two week uh, two week engagement, and that was one of the most refreshing things I've experienced as a consultant. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I wish that were more consistent. The question was when we're, um, you know, augmenting uh, an existing team, um, you know, do we, like as a company, like do we ask some of those questions to, to try to get uh, things, um, things moving faster? Um, you know, sometimes yes, sometimes no. I think we probably always uh, try to set people up for success in that way, but um, you know, some, some are like the, the client I just talked about who are, you know, very receptive to that and they're like, hey, I've already got the PowerPoint ready to go. Um, and some are just like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. And then we start and we don't have any answers. Um, so yeah, that can be kind of, kind of hit or miss. Um, but I think we, we certainly always, always try, uh, try to do that and try to get those, uh, uh, at least some of, some of those questions answered for folks before they, um, before they start. Right. Yeah, so the question was, um, you know, if you're not someone who is, is a good writer and you struggle to figure out where to start um, with trying to document something, uh, where can you begin? Um, it's a great question, um, and, and certainly not a, a rare um, uh, thought for me to be like, hey, I'm, I'm a great developer, but you know, writing, writing just words, uh, not my forte. Um, what I think most, if not all, developers are good at is breaking things down, right? We all are, you know, we, we, we 
know how to attack a problem and break it down into tiny little pieces. Um, and I think I would do that. Um, you know, if I'm, you know, if there's a, you know, if I'm trying to, you know, document a piece of, uh, you know, if it's if it's a piece of the code base, I'm like to the point where it uh, almost feels like I'm insulting the person who's going to read it. Like they're going to be like, wow, I'm, I'm not this dumb. You didn't have to go into this much detail, right? <laughs> when you feel that, you're probably on the right track, right? Because if you're, so, you're already on the team, like you said, you have you know, all this knowledge that's just kind of in people's heads and isn't written down. Um, it feels so basic to you all, um, but it's not to someone who is new. So I would kind of start there and just kind of like, uh, just again, really just breaking things down as, as simply as possible. Um, and even if it's just a, it doesn't have to be in a format that is, like really like pretty or readable. Um, like if you can, um, like have people give me like a like a bulleted list of, in kind of like that and say, hey, can you help me turn this into something um, that is more that, that I won't be embarrassed to show people? Um, and you know, because if you have someone on your team who is um, who can can write well, they can take that and just and just run with it, right? Um, so if you can break things down really small um, and just write your just write bullet points. Um, Another strategy I've seen work really, really well. Um, if you're not a, you know, you sit down to write something um, and you're just, you know, drawing a blank. Um, if you can talk about it, um, that can really jumpstart things. Like get on a, um, you know, a video call with someone and record it and just talk about the thing that you want to write about, um, and then go back and, and listen to it, and you'll find that you've probably written it just speaking out loud. I got another suggestion for that. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely making a making a pull request to, to make those uh, make those changes um, like to documentation or something. That, that's a great way to to go about it as well. Because hey, again, I mean, maybe there's someone on the team who is uh, you know is uh, has a way with words, and they're your uh, resident Shakespeare, and they'll they'll look at that and go, hey, yeah, this is great. Let me just uh, I'll just help you clean that up a little bit, and make it pretty, um, and uh, you're off to the races. Yeah. Yeah. The question was, uh, if you have a, a, a client that's a really tight, you know, time pressure, uh, but they're also not on their game and and, and not uh, setting you up for success from the beginning. Um, I, I think it, it comes down to really um, one recognizing that um, and and being really on top of communicating. Uh, that whether it's you know like I've done that myself or been like this has to come from uh, someone else and I've you know gotten it to the point of um, uh, you know saying like uh, folks have said hey we will pause this project until we have this because we're just everybody's wasting their time um, and that does not make sense for us it does not make sense for you um, so let's take a pause until we can figure that out uh, and usually folks will go oh okay well we'll, we'll figure we'll figure that out now uh, I think we there's a I'm trying to remember the story our uh, one of our one of our founders once uh, threatened um, to um, uh, it was I forgot which company it was but it, it was a it was a large uh, you know publicly traded company that he um, threatened and they were not giving them something that they needed I forget exactly what it was but he was like I will go to the CEO I will find him I will hunt him down and I will I will get in his car on his commute and tell him all about this until we get access and then they showed up the next day and they had the thing that they uh, that they needed so um, sometimes you got to be the uh, be the squeaky wheel um, and just overly uh, communicate that and you know hopefully it doesn't become kind of a, a CYA situation where you, you get a couple weeks later and they're like oh why haven't you done anything it's like oh well I didn't have access and well you didn't tell me that you know so uh, communication to make sure everyone is aware of those problems I think I saw someone else with a hand up over there I, I have a similar question. okay cool awesome anyone else yeah Tell <laughs> Oh God, yeah. Where do I, where is there? I, I got halfway through my MFA in acting at uh, at UCF uh, in Orlando, and then I uh, and then I quit because it turns out that uh, uh, it's called show business, not show friends, um, and I didn't really uh, I didn't really didn't really vibe uh, with it. But uh, got to do some fun stuff along along the way. Um, I did uh, my highlight was uh, I played uh, 
the title character in that, uh, that Scottish play you're not supposed to say the name of because it's bad luck uh, with the Vermont Shakespeare Festival. So uh, that, was, that was fun. But now I get to be a tech person uh, who's a former theater kid, which is just a superpower. We good? All right. Thanks, everybody. See you at the uh, after party. <laughs> <laughs>